colour processing, detection of movement, assessment of shape and form, the role of the brain seems to be predominant in vision. Is it not ultimately more important than even our eyes? Eve Rossetti is Professor of Physiology and a researcher in Neuroscience at the CNRS. Leah and he will test the involvement of the brain in the visual process. So, let's start by checking that your motor skills are well in line with your vision by throwing these little brains into a basketball net. All right. <laughs> Very good. Perfect. Great, got it. That's it. One more. Perfect. Now let's try these glasses. What I'm going to ask you to do now is to aim for the blue basket. OK, can I open my eyes? Yes, open your eyes and aim for the blue basket. OK. There it went completely left, didn't it? It seems so, yes, the blue one. Yes, yes, but I aimed to the right, but it didn't work at all. It's really strange. You're aiming more to the right than the blue, right? Yes. Fitted with glasses that deviate her vision to the left, spontaneously, Leia would tend to aim for the orange basket, so she has to train to aim for the blue basket. Is it becoming natural? Uh, yes. Then let's remove the glasses. OK. And we'll continue the experiment. So this time, aim for the other basket, the orange one. Oh, my. OK, OK. In the beginning with the glasses, we asked you to target the blue and the glasses shifted your vision of the blue, so it was here, so you attained the orange. Yes. And if you were perfectly adapted to the glasses, if you had kept them on long enough when you had removed them, we'd ask you to aim at the orange and there you'd hit the blue. When the volunteer puts on the glasses, the perception of the surrounding world remains pretty much unchanged, except that it is shifted in space, so vision does not give any information about the errors produced by the glasses. On the other hand, when moving in space occurs, at that moment action will be directed towards the shifted vision. That is to say that to reach a point that is here, you have to aim for another point, for what is called the virtual image of the object in terms of optics. And so the action is like the vision's reality test. This experiment illustrates very well the role of the eye as an intermediary in vision and its codependency on the brain in our perception of the world. Thank you. So if the brain and eyes work together, what happens when they don't agree? I'm getting there now. Now let's visit the tilted house. OK. So look this way. It's a house in which everything was scrupulously glued vertically and then, okay. once construction was finished, we lifted it to tilt it 15 degrees. The best way to know what the true vertical is, is to use a builder's plumb line. So I propose adjusting this so that it complies with your perception of the vertical. The tilted house experiment will demonstrate different things. Firstly, it shows the importance of vision in encoding information on gravity. It's rather curious since vision is not specialised in the analysis of gravity. We have our inner ear for that, the vestibule, which is specialised in encoding gravity and terrestrial attraction. Despite the presence of this organ specific for that, despite the presence of receptors under the soles of our feet that indicate the differences in pressure, of muscle receptors that tell us our posture, we realise when Leia opens her eyes that she is drawn to the right, to align with the visual information that she unquestionably knows to be false. She knows that the house is tilted and cannot prevent her brain from using this information to keep herself standing so-called straight, and so she's not standing straight. So that's the first thing. It shows the extraordinary force of visual information. And that comes from the fact that vision is the most important sense in humans for encoding space. Vision is the sense that occupies the greatest surface of our cortex. And given the habitual reliability of visual information, the brain attributes great trust to visual information. And when disturbed in the tilted house, even if the other information remains reliable, the brain continues to trust the visual information. After the vertical, where is the horizontal? I've positioned this bar and ask you, which way does it lean? It's higher on the right, isn't it? I'll bet it's horizontal, isn't it? 
Why would you imagine horizontal? Well, because everything is off, so I must compensate. But I still find it very high on the right. Then, if I take a ball, I throw it up, then it comes down. Wow, amazing! So it means it's lower on this side. That's it. OK. <laughs> in optical illusions, we're in a different circumstance because, in general, there are no conflicts between vision and other sensory modalities. In this case, it leads to conflicts between what are called qualities of the visual modality, so shadows, movements, shapes, depth and colour, for example. We are used to using contextual information because they allow us to better understand the stimulus we are trying to analyse. And this importance of context is found in many optical illusions, like colour illusions, where one can vary the perceived colour of an object based on the colour surrounding this object. One can vary the perception of the size of an object by the size of the objects that are located around the object. So context is something absolutely fundamental, that we often use without knowing, and which gives place to a number of optical illusions. So what is interpreted in definitive is largely dependent on context. Here, two circles are flashing at the same time. When the colour of the background changes, the brain interprets this as asynchronous flashing. Perspective can also play tricks. In this optical illusion, the circle on top looks bigger than the one on the bottom, but they are actually the same size. Here, if we stare at the cross, a green circle appears after a few moments. And this is a fiction created by our brain. If we shift our eyes from the cross, pink circles appear instantly. The brain is not interested in constant information and prefers change. It naturally replaces the missing pink circle by a green circle and thus creates movement. Light and shadow play also affect our interpretation of an image, so dip or bump. And what do you see in this image? A rock between two bricks, perhaps? Once the illusion is revealed, the image will never be seen and interpreted in the same way. At the center of this image hides an object. The object in the wall is in fact but the ash of a cigar. The brain chooses the more realistic interpretation. The primary job of the brain with vision is to extract information. The information that attains the retina is extremely degraded because the light has to go through all the retinal tissue and all of its cells and vessels that are interspersed between the arrival of the light and the receptors. And the cones and rods are at the back of the retina. The brain has to do a lot of analysis and the retina starts this analysis to extract from a very noisy, degraded signal. Signals that allow us to really distinguish shapes and colours in our visual information. And from there, the brain is able to interpret the signals it has received. It can choose to add or remove certain things depending on the circumstances. For example, removing the nose that is useless to see since it is constantly between both eyes and adding relevant information that is missing. Our vision is the result of what our eye perceives and what our brain interprets. Animals based on their needs can have abilities that seem inaccessible to us. But with the progress of science and the miniaturization of technology, we can imagine the conception of lenses that bring us closer to these superpowers.